we're about to embark on a journey. We're going to build the most powerful mini PC that you've ever seen. Or at least I'm hopeful it'll be the most powerful you've ever seen. Starting with hard drives. How do we get hard drives to connect to our mini PC? Now keep in mind, these things are usually limited in the number of SATA ports we have. Now this is my solution. I'm going to take USB. USB to SATA adapters, quite useful. And we can power something like SSD or even a hard drive. Now one consideration of the hard drives, which I'm sure you'll be familiar, is that we will have to provide external power in order to get these booting. So how am I going to do that with a USB adapter? Good question. But I got you covered. Check this out. You actually get little AC adapters, which, check this, you can plug in to one of these adapters. Now, this is a little DC power supply with a DC cable. Very, very easy. We'll plug that into our mains. I have no idea how much power this is going to draw. Hopefully it saves uh, power in the long run, but we'll test that out as well. And I bought special SATA to USB adapters that actually accept external power so we can power our hard drive without any problems. So I'm hopeful this will be a good solution for those mini PC enthusiasts out there. And I'll even measure the power draw, but that might be a future video, otherwise this gets too long. Okay, so that's hard drives covered. SSDs, could even do NVMEs. Where's it going? Well, it's all going in the Elite Disk. 800 G3. I'm sure you can see the next problem. Where are we going to fit the hard drive in this little mini PC? I'm planning to install at least four, but I'll show you that somewhere later in the video. Stay tuned. But for now, let's unbox more parts. Let me check. Now, one of these parts was not meant to be for this build. We'll find out which one, but this one's okay. This is going to be really cool. It's a 2.5 gigabit network interface card that plugs in to an A&E M.2 slot. Now, this is going to be quite useful because this one actually adapts to the rear flex port on this mini PC, and it's going to allow me to install 2.5 gigabit Ethernet connectivity using RJ45. Invaluable on your mini PC. You absolutely need to get fast networking. But I'm also hopeful to upgrade even further. I'll show, show you in a little bit soon. But for the time being, that's a really easy upgrade. But check this. Sometimes 2.5 gigabit is just not fast enough. You want more. 10 gigabit. That's right. This is 10 gigabit. And not just that. It's a dual port. Damn, those look cool. Now, this is the RJ45 model. And why am I going with RJ45 10 gig? gigabit what's well, cheaper to run plus we get two ports which is fantastic now what model is this well somewhat questionable it's a inspur i have no idea if it's going to work but requires x8 connectivity which i mean the mini pc doesn't have x8 does it doesn't even have pcie ports don't worry i've got a solution for that uh let me see if i can track that down but uh give me give me half a second i just gotta go go to the other room give me half a second okay got it easy see i told you it wouldn't take long now this is going to be pretty cool but uh we'll get there soon we'll get there soon power cable what's this gonna power it's okay we, we don't need that yet here's the adapter magic okay it doesn't look like much yet let me double check okay it's not the the part we're not meant to see it's okay this is absolutely the solution check it out that's right x16 m.2 now you've you've seen these before right that's an m.2 m key adapter to x16 and I assume that's the external power to keep that running. Now, normally you would have seen this on external GPU builds, but we're not doing external GPU. I mean, you could, but I'm going to use it for 10 gigabit ethernet. It's like cheating in some way, but is this going to work? I mean, do we get enough bandwidth through one of these? Stay tuned. We'll find out. I'm sure we will. And I think we'll get enough power as well. May only get enough uh, bandwidth for one slot, but that's okay. 10 gigabit counts either way. Now, what else are we fitting? Well, this adapter is quite neat as well. However, we need to check if this one's actually relevant to this machine. It's uh, actually going to go into a different build, but I'm going to show it to you now anyway, because I feel like it's such a cool adapter that fits into the M.2 M key slot. Check this out. We got a 20 pin header for USB 3.1 and it adapts to M.2. And we have an internal USB C header, which also adapts to M.2. I mean, that's just like the most ideal little adapter. But stay tuned, we'll use that on a future build. Now, next one, another hard drive cable. Now, this one doesn't have the ability to take the SATA connection. This one's a pure USB to SATA connection, ideal for SSDs. So stay tuned, we'll check that out. Next mysterious item. This is fantastic. A second PCIe adapter. Now, this one converts the M.2 
dot two a and e key two in x8 slot. I know, I know, this is crazy. We can take our mini PC and give it PCIe slots. Feels like cheating in some way yet again. This is awesome. Now this expansion's great. There is one consideration, which is bandwidth. But uh, we'll deal with bandwidth in another time. Now also it's kind of bright in here. If you ever wondered why I wear sunglasses, these lights are really bright. I can barely see anything. Uh, so hence the sunglasses does helps I can see you better. But uh, let's continue. Let's continue. Unboxing. Next one. What else do we need? Well, we don't need that rubbish. The RAM. I decided to go for two modules of 16 gigabyte HyperX RAM. And uh, check the specifications here. That's actually quite powerful looking RAM. We do have the ability to run two modules on this particular mini PC. And this is going to be 2400 megahertz, which is relatively decent speed. So dim, of course, laptop RAM, so relatively cheap. Although, uh, do take note though, these prices are going up lately because of the uh, problems of NAND flash and with the semiconductors. But uh, hopefully that doesn't last forever. Hopefully eventually prices come back down. Now there is one more thing. And uh, I do need to go to the other room. Stay, stay here for a second. And mystery parcel number two. Let's see what else I've got stashed away. Check this out. Now I guarantee you didn't see this coming because this is a NAS. Wait, I'm taking a shortcut? I thought we were building a mini PC server. Now I'm just gonna use a NAS? No, 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 T take note. This one's old. This is USB 2.0, which means this is dated and that's a gigabit port, maybe even slow. Might, might be hundred megabytes, we'll check. But I'm gonna take our mini PC and I'm gonna amend this NAS to it. Something like this. The end result is gonna be four hard drives connected to a mini PC, but I'm not gonna use the NAS but I am going to use the NAS, at least in part. We'll use the hard drive trace because that's going to be useful and you can see those vanishing behind the green screen. It's not working as well. Let's see if I can fit, refit that. Okay, it's not, not perfect fitment. It's not a very good uh, NAS tray. But anyway, this old hardware we can easily take and install our hard drives and I'm going to strip everything out of it. We're just going to use the casing. We, we won't even retain the NAS components unless we can somehow siphon power from this to power our hard drives, which I am tempted to try. Uh, so I, I might call this a Frankenstein build, if you will. But uh, we'll see. We'll throw that away for now. Next one. Mini PC. Showcase. Very, very straightforward to upgrade these little mini PCs. One little tab at the back. Cover comes off. Here's our current unit. SSD. I've removed the SSD bracket for better viewing. Uh, but that's all going to come out. We're going to strip this apart and really tune this up to get the most out of this hardware. We won't have to do anything with CPU fan, but we do need to remove the fan temporarily just to install the RAM modules. But otherwise that SSD is going to come out and we're going to fit all of these extra adapters. The Flex IO, I suspect I'll remove and install that 2.5 gigabit network interface card. That's easy. RAM modules, piece of cake to get these in as well. We'll throw those in. And well, we also need to get some power. So I suspect those will do. And we do want to get the 10 gigabit in. We may not use the hard drive bracket. I think we can throw that away. We will need the X16 and maybe even the X8 PCIe adapters. So we'll throw both of those in. And oh, don't forget, we do have some other parts here. So another little adapter and obviously a hard drive. Oh, a bit unsafe putting the hard drive on there, but you get the idea. And then we put the cover back on and there it is. We have a server mini PC, which is looking fantastic. Ah, there is one problem. The cover's on backwards. Perfect. Okay, it's done. Subscribe, stay tuned, I'll show you in the future how we put all of this together and make this truly the most powerful system we could possibly put together. I know it doesn't look impressive right now and it looks a little bit chaotic, like how's this thing even gonna work? Trust me on this, it will work. But in the future, right now, we don't need to worry about it too much, but uh, keep, keep in mind, we're gonna take all of this hardware, we're gonna turn this into a fantastic home server. It's gonna have ample storage space. I'm hoping for at least four hard drives. If I can afford it, maybe a few SSDs, but those prices have sort of skyrocketed. So, oh, that might be tough to do. But the idea is to set up a RAID 5. A RAID 5 and a little mini PC, fantastic. Now I'm also hopeful that it will be possible to install maybe an external GPU, but that's definitely pushing it. You'll have to subscribe to see those. And in the meantime, it's getting hot here, or is it just me? Maybe it's just all these upgrades. I'll see you on the next video. Subscribe, stay tuned, and take it easy out there. Thank <laughs> you.